Hello there, I'm Father George Salzman uh, from the Harvard Catholic Center. We're here in uh, the larger part of Harvard Yard, Church Centenary Theater, where they had, they started using it for the 300th of Harvard as a gathering spot. It's been used for graduations ever since. Over there is Harvard Yard per se, right on the other side of University Hall and then the main gate. Uh, behind me is uh, Widener Library, uh, a famous building, the largest university and library in the world. And I thought uh, we could just notice how a tale or two hangs on that. Um, Harry Elkins Widener was a descendant of a merger of two extremely wealthy families uh, there in Philadelphia. They had uh, his grandfather, P.A.B. Widener, had this 110 room house uh, just outside the city limits in Cheltenham, uh, which exists to this day. And he had a, they had a, a ballroom for a thousand folk and an art collection not to be believed, which later became the National Museum of Art in, uh, in Washington. It was supposed to be the Philadelphia Museum of Art up at the top in the, uh, that beautiful museum at the end of the parkway. Anyway, Harry Elkins Widener trusted in technology, which we do too, and uh, he bought a ticket on the Titanic, which was unsinkable on its maiden voyage. He got on that. It was 1912. It was April. They were rushing across the Atlantic Ocean to make a speed record. They were going at 22 knots solid. It was a ship that was 10 stories high and 90, nine story, 90 stories long, and uh, it hit an iceberg. And the iceberg kept scraping it and it opened up what were seemingly sealed cabinets which would keep it afloat and they filled with water and uh, and it sank it sank stern first it sank in about three hours didn't give them much time to exit they got the women and uh, children on board the lifeboats uh, harry and his father stayed on board uh with his adc and then um and of course he lost his life he lost his life in that when they opened his will, when they looked at his will, it said that he wanted his books to be given to Harvard if they would put them in a building of suitable uh, uh, eminence or respect. And so at that point, the, uh, his mother and Harvard's president uh, began meeting. His mother realized how much Harry thought of his own library, Harvard, and the president, so they grew through that. And finally, his mother determined that she would gift Harvard not only with the housing for Harry's books, for the surrounding library because the other library had it was made from one tenth of the books that it contained the books were distributed all over campus so gore hall which had been here was torn down uh, within a year they were uh, they started a fire over where the uh, the, the uh, groundbreaking would be in the in the winter the winter earth to soften that up and his younger brother turned the spade and they built this uh, with a remarkable number of bricks uh, per week uh, going up like anything and it has, uh, as the stat often goes, it has uh, 50 miles of shelves and uh, five miles of walkways through it across 10 stories. It's the biggest university library in the world. About uh, 3 million books in there, 3 million books in storage, and the largest system, about 20 million books total. Uh, and other stats for other things, such as photos and stuff, which are, which are all enormous. But a delightful place to study. It was, a, it was a student who said she dared ever go into the stacks without a compass a sandwich and a whistle. <laughs> there's, a certain, there's a certain amount of truth. There's also a certain amount of wisdom to that. If you, uh, his mother insisted that the uh, Eleanor Elkins Winder, who gave it, they were attributed to P.A.B. Winder, who's much wealthier. Uh, sometimes newsmen just take what they think is the truth rather than checking what is. So she was quite irritated uh, that giving her Elkins fortune for it uh, wasn't really appreciated. Uh, but she brought in a Philadelphia architect to do it right, Horace Trumbauer. And Horace Trumbauer had as his detail person uh, the first black to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania's architecture school. That's Julian Abel, or Julian Abel. I leave it for you to determine just to get you looking into his name. Fascinating fellow. He designed Duke University, he designed the Duke University Chapel, and now they have the plaza, which is sort of the main crossroads on the Duke University campus, named, named after him. And when they put up a portrait of him in the administration building in 1988, it was the first portrait of a black on the whole Duke campus. So interesting to think of the changes with time and how, how long it's taken us uh, to come even uh, a short distance. Uh, the details he did, you can see above the doorway, the gate, there are four major printers uh, from England and Italy, such as Albus Minutius, the famous symbol of the, uh, the anchor and the dolphin. 
had an accident in England and so on. It's a French one, it's a German one. So the tales are by him. And he did other many fam many other famous buildings, such as at the end of the American Champs Elysees, the Ben Franklin Parkway in Philadelphia, he did that great Greek temple building the uh, uh, the Philadelphia Museum of Art and halfway down the uh, the library, the main library, the Logan Library, the central library of the system. Um, the bell's ringing, I better shut up, and we'll talk about it later, but I hope you get a chance to look into him, and also to Harry. He, uh, they put in fresh flowers at his mother's wish every week, and on the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic, I went out and bought flowers as a fellow Philadelphia, and uh, put them in there for him. The nuns always taught us whenever we uh, heard a siren, or whenever we heard of someone dying, to stop and to say a prayer. It would be great if we would say a prayer right now for him, and for all the benefactors of Harvard, helped us in our lives, our parents in particular. God bless you.